Hello. Welcome to my inaugural lecture. The starting point for all of this was that they offered me a choice of dates for my inaugural lecture when I looked on Wikipedia, as you do, uh, to see what any of these dates might mean. And I discovered that the 12th of November 1990, 18 years ago, was uh, the date on which Tim Berners-Lee posted a proposal to his bosses at CERN, a proposal for the World Wide Web. So basically, it's the web's 18th birthday. The web comes of age today. So I thought that would be a nice starting point. Uh, so I started building my lecture based on that thought. The important thing about Tim Berners-Lee's proposal was that he had this idea for an international free network where everybody who used it could make and share things. They would all be producing and sharing knowledge together. That was his vision. It didn't necessarily pan out like that for a while, but it's becoming a bit more like that now. Um, so it wasn't meant to be some computer click-click version of television. It was meant to be uh, a network of creativity. That's what it's all about. That's what I'm talking about today. Uh, so then I stirred in a bunch of other concerns to that, uh, ending up with a kind of set of parts that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so these are the elements I'm going to talk about today. First of all, everyday creativity and Web 2.0. And contrasting that with traditional media, uh, especially television. Mm. I'm going to connect that in some ways with our assessment-driven education system. And then I'll connect those things with environmental problems and climate change. One way to try to deal creatively with some of those challenges are what I call tools for thinking, which I'll be talking about. And so that, that's Finn, my son, who's uh, 10 months old. There he is in, in photographic form. You know, I have greater concerns about the future than ever because of this. Um, Web 2.0, you've probably heard about it, and I, I can see from most of your faces that most of you know what it is. I've built this for you in Lego. So this is, in, metaphorically speaking, this is the web as it was for many years from, you know, when we first started to notice it in 94, 95, up to the early 2000s. And in some ways, still, we have uh, a web world like this, where you've got people with gardens, separate little gardens, Maybe one of those is me working away on my website, made by me. Nobody else really contributes. It's me that does it. Another one, you know, there's maybe the BBC making their website, made by them. There it is, presented by the BBC to the world, and so on. So you've got lots of different websites, lots of diversity, all very interesting, lots of interesting gardens. Um, but they're separate. They've got fences between them. Um, so separate producers working on separate things. But um, the idea of Web 2.0 is that it's more like an allotment. So you've got different people coming together and working on the same thing. The obvious example of this is Wikipedia, where it would be nothing without its users. Its users come together, and they create the content which is there. And that is the idea that Tim Berners-Lee from Dorset had uh, on the 12th of November 1990. That's what he thought it would be all along. But for a while, as you know, it, the web wasn't quite like that. It was a bit more of a one-way broadcast model. Now it's becoming somewhat more like that. Uh, with people making and sharing and taking part in both individual and collective creative kind of activities. Is this, though, a significant phenomenon? Here's me talking about you know, the making and sharing culture and the idea that people are making and sharing things online. This is a report from New Scientist on 15th of March. That's my birthday. Write it down. Uh, 2008. I've looked at the original study it's based on as well. Seems quite reliable. It's based on a survey of 2,000 people in the US aged between 13 and 75. So it's American teens and adults. And just the sort of headline findings, this one's quite normal. 69% of US adults and teens consume citizen media content. That's not very surprising these days, given that the web has quite a lot of it. 54% uh, edit their own music, video, or photos. So they've had the experience. They either agreed or you know, somewhat agreed that they'd done that recently. Um, so that's people engaging with their own digital stuff and changing it in certain ways. So that, that's you know, more than half of Americans have done that. But then the striking one, I think, is that a third of people, basically, agreed with the statement, I see myself as a broadcaster of my own media material. Um, I thought it was quite striking. A third of people say, agreeing either strongly or somewhat agreeing with the statement, I see myself as a broadcaster of my own media material. A whole third of people agreeing with that. So it goes to show that you know, maybe it's not just pie in the sky, sort of technologist kind of talk to be talking about these things. Um, that's a glass half full. <clears throat> you can guess what that one is. That's a glass half empty. Uh, 
talking about technology like this is, is often kind of like this, I think. Um, people who are enthusiastic or interested in, just by, just by being interested in Web 2.0, well, then other people go, oh, you know, you're ridiculously celebratory about these new technologies, and you think the new technology is going to do this and that, and, you know, they think that you're just kind of, you've been reading Wired magazine and drinking too much fizzy pop. Um, for example, they say, you know, you're much too simplistic. Don't you know that Facebook is valued at $15 billion, apparently? Uh, not because it's a, a cool website, but because it's a vast harvester of people's personal data. They willingly and happily put their personal data uh, into Facebook and, you know, uh, and create a, a massive warehouse of data of enormous value to corporations that want to get their hands on such stuff. But the, the debate always seems to be about whether these things are either brilliant or terrifying. It seems weird to me that it has to be either one or the other. I don't know why we can't accept that both things might actually be true. Um, here's some enthusiastic books about Web 2.0. Um, there's, there's, there's something good in all of those, I would say. Perhaps the best or most interesting one is this one by Charles Ledbetter, um, which I'm, I'm not going to tell you much about here. But uh, he has this idea of you are what you share. Uh, Woody Guthrie, U, uh, US singer-songwriter in the 1930s, he would publish his own music in little booklets, and he would attach this copyright notice to it, which I, I like. I'll read it out. Um, this song is copyrighted in the US under the seal of copyright, blah, 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 for a period of 28 years, and anybody caught singing it without our permission will be good friends of our own, because we don't give a darn. <laughs> Publish it, write it, sing it, swing to it, yodel it. We wrote it, that's all we wanted to do. I like that. We wrote it, that's all we wanted to do. That seems nice. Um, and that's the kind of spirit which uh, Charles Ledbetter gets excited about in this book, the idea of people just making stuff and putting it out there so that other people can do whatever they want with it.